out here in the sunny side area of Utah today, checking out these Coke ovens. Coke is coal with all of its volatile properties removed, including the water and coal tar. We came out to check these out today, had a good time walking around, seeing the interesting way they had built all these, over 800 of these ovens all lined up. We parked at this cool looking old building and checked it out first. A little bit of info my friend Nolan had put together. It says, Good quality coking coal is determined by its moisture, sulfur, and ash content. Once baked, it has virtually no moisture remaining and becomes a hard gray porous cinder that burns very hot. The remaining impurities baked out are called slag or coke breeze. While slag was initially thought to be a waste product, it soon proved worthwhile in industrial applications such as brick making and for lining railroad tracks. In 1898, Sunnyside's coal was discovered to be exceptional for coking. Prior to that time, all of eastern Utah coke was produced at Castle Gate, which pr produced inconsistent and often substandard results. In 1902, the first coke ovens were built at Sunnyside, and the coal shipments to Castle Gate ended by 1905. During 1912 alone, the coke ovens at Sunnyside produced 347,000 tons of coke. To put that into perspective, that's 6,900 coal cars. By 1919, Sunnyside had the largest operating operation of beehive-shaped coke ovens in the United States, 819 ovens by the early 1920s. These coke ovens were in operation 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, built with a large hole on top. The coal was dropped into the oven a, to a depth between 24 and 36 inches. It was ignited and allowed to bake for up to three days. Once baked, the coke was cooled with water and then removed from the oven by hand with large coking shovels. Finally, the waste material was also removed. The process was repeated. The heat from the initial firing remained and began to bake the coal almost immediately when it entered the oven. It was hot and dangerous, and many of the coke oven workers were burned. This old building, a couple other structures, and the remains of the coke ovens are all that remain here. By the 1930s, the coking operations here had waned. The nationwide demand for coke was falling and only 50 coal cars per year were being shipped from Sunnyside. The coke ovens sat idle. In 1943, shipbuilder Henry Kaiser leased the Sunnyside mines and coking operations to provide coke for his steel mill in Fontana, California. Kaiser opened up 297 of the old coke ovens and operated them 24-7 until 1958 when they were permanently closed. Kaiser continued to ship Sunnyside coal to his California operation until 1982. This is an interesting piece of history if you want to stop by. It's not too far off the highway and really cool to see.
will we get by now we're standing in line by this railroad sign and now she's dancing around by some lonely soul never mind the rain that's coming down and she feels free but too many people are looking at me so if you find there's a place for me We'll take a train that's going south Day to day she shines as the fields roll on by Through these wide open spaces she loves And she smiles all the way And every moment she stays I'm one day closer to home Well I don't mind 